Welcome to day one of a brand new series that I'm launching called 25 Apps in 25 Days. Yep, you heard that right. For the first time ever on the channel, I'm gonna attempt to do daily uploads for 25 days running. Now, I'm not a vlogger by any means. I also don't do any sort of crazy challenges, but what I do know is apps. And if you're new to the channel, then what you should probably know is that up until earlier this year, I uploaded monthly top Android apps videos for over eight years. And then I stopped. But as a fun way to sort of bring back the spirit of that series, I've been brewing on this idea of doing a sort of advent style series in the lead up to Christmas where every single day I showcase a brand new Android app that I reckon you're gonna love. Now, I do wanna say upfront, I've actually decided to completely forego any sponsors for this series, mainly due to the nature of daily uploads and how fast the turnaround times are gonna to have to be for these videos. And so that means this series is supported purely by those of you who are kind enough to download and use any of my apps, as well as those who purchase any of the products available on my shop. I do wanna give a dedicated shout out though to one of my apps in particular, which is called Shelf. And it's actually the perfect companion to this series because it's essentially a library of handpicked app recommendations. Literally every day we add new apps to Shelf. So if you're someone who loves app recommendations, then it is definitely the app for you. Anyway, this series should be a bucket load of fun. So hit subscribe so that you see the videos as they go live. But with that out of the way, let's get to the first app for day number one. All right, we're kicking off the series by discussing what I think is, at the time of making this video at least, the best Nova launcher replacement. And if you've been watching any of my recent videos, then this might actually come as a bit of a surprise to you because the best replacement launcher, I think, is not in fact Octopi Launcher as I previously hinted at. It's none other than Smart Launcher. Let me explain. You see, this is what Smart Launcher looks like out of the box and where with other launchers like Launcher or Hyperion Launcher, you get a pretty stock launch experience with customizations galore thrown in. This just kind of looks different. You've got these very old school One UI looking icons down here, this funky smart search bar below those. You swipe down and it doesn't open the notification panel but launches this other interface. And then when you swipe into the app drawer, I mean, it just doesn't really resemble the sorts of launches that I'm familiar with. And even when you open and close apps, like the animations aren't bad, but they're also nothing really to write home about, especially in comparison to the animations offered by other launches at the moment. Oh, and I always found the interface for customizing the launcher a little hard to get my head around. But then just last month, I saw a comment on a recent video I posted telling me that I should try the most recent version of the app and to enable a hidden setting which actually improves the animations. And after spending a couple of hours playing around with it last month, I was pretty much fully converted. First things first, down in the description, I've actually placed a backup file to my home screen setup configuration, which if you know me, is the setup that I like using on literally every phone I use. So if you wanna follow along exactly with this video, then go ahead and download that. And once you have, you can long press your home screen, swipe up, then tap on backup. I'll tap on restore backup from file. Then I'll locate the backup file, which for most of you should be in your downloads folder. But for me, it's already taken me to the documents folder where I previously saved it. But once I've found it, I'll tap on it. I'll hit okay and that'll go through the process of restoring my home screen setup. And I will say, for some reason, I found that I actually had to lock and then re-wake up my phone to get the backup to work. Otherwise, my entire phone would hang. But check this out, once I unlock, my home screen is literally completely set up and I have absolutely no clue how it just restored that KWGT widget without me having to set it up. But that is freaking amazing. Now, before I show you anything else, let's just long press our home screen again. And as you can see, we now have an updated, more modernized customization menu, which you can enable in the settings and which actually got activated thanks to my backup file. But let's first tap this highlight apps that have active notifications button and I'll tap to open that, then tap the toggle and hit allow, and then I'll come back home. Then I'll long press again and tap this settings button here. And I'm pretty sure that because we restored that backup file, it's actually automatically enabled this experimental options section down here. But if it's not showing, all you need to do is long press here where it says version info and it'll show. I clearly just hid mine though, so I'll have to long press to re-enable it. But now if we open that, you can see the options that I've already enabled, including the new preferences menu option. But my favorite option is this new window to icon animation option. With that enabled, check this out. When I come home and open up and then close my various home screen apps here, would you look at those lovely animations? 
Now, they're not always perfect. Sometimes the animations don't show at all, particularly if you open an app very quickly after closing one, but the Smart Launcher team are aware of this and that's why it's still only an experimental option, but they're working a way to make this even more reliable and it's already pretty dang solid as it is. But then check out my customized app drawer. This beautifully frosted and blurry look, which gives me strong One UI 8 vibes, by the way, it's actually thanks to one of the available themes. So if we tap the three dot icon here, then tap the settings icon, then open up the global appearance section. As you can see, I've selected this frosted glass theme, but there's also a couple of other options, including this material U option, which has a more stock Android vibe about it. And there's also this new liquid glass theme as well. And this is only available on the beta version if you enable it via the experimental option section. So you may or may not see this theme yourself, but I'll come back to that one in a moment. But I'll set this back to frosted glass though and close that up. And I've also customized the font here for the title text and also the body text to Google Sans, which I think looks super elegant. And you can also tweak these home animations too, if you like. My two favorites of which are the blur effect and the one that I'm currently using, this Android 13 option. Oh, and if we come back home and open up the app drawer again, one of my favorite features that is super underrated is if we tap the three dot icon here, then tap this sorting icon. And as you can see, I've set my sorting method to by usage. And let me tell you, switching to this setting has been an all time game changer for me in that it almost always shows the apps that I wanna use somewhere in this top section. But if not, it's pretty much alphabetical after we get past the previously opened apps. But honestly, I don't think I've ever had to swipe beyond this first page of apps since enabling the sorting method, which has been amazing. Oh, and if we tap the three dot icon again, then tap settings, then open up this gestures and hotkeys section, I also made sure to set this double tap option to turn off the screen. And this does require accessibility access, so just keep that in mind. But then if we open up this single finger option, I also changed this swipe down option to show the notifications panel. And with all those customizations in place, the launcher now looks and behaves exactly how I want it to. And it also feels really, really fluid too. And then as I said, I'm also running an early build of the launcher while filming this video, which may very well be available on the Play Store by the time you're watching it. But check this out, I'll long press, tap on settings, then tap on global appearance. And if I change this theme here to liquid glass, then tap on edit theme and lower the blur radius right the way down like so, then come home and over to the second page. Here I have a bunch of the default smart launcher widgets set up, all of which now have this beautiful liquid design aesthetic and I mean, how good do they look? They even morph and distort on the sides like the real version of liquid glass. So hats off to the developers for making this work. But that's it. That is the Smart Launcher app. And that is day one of the 25 apps in 25 day series complete. And as you can hopefully see, there really is no disputing in my opinion that Smart Launcher is currently the greatest Nova Launcher replacement available right now. And to be honest, it's even out Eclipse Nova Launcher already in my opinion. Again, don't forget to check out my app shelf for even more great app recommendations. I literally manually add nearly every single app recommendation myself, unless it's a user added recommendation. And like I said, we add new recommendations every single day and they're all absolute bangers. Aside from that, hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next episode. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.